Hi, I'm Alex and welcome back to the Boathouse Paddle series where we talk about everything concerning paddle. Today we're going to look at the three things you need to do once you've set up your paddle account before trying to implement a checkout. What you can see here is just a empty sandbox account that I've already created. Head over to checkout and checkout settings and add a default payment link. This is the first most important step and you will run into an error during checkout. It will display something went wrong without much more details, most likely because you've forgotten to set a default payment link. This is used by Paddle to redirect users when they want to change their payment method or if you're sending them an invoice via the Paddle system. It'll redirect to this payment link. It'll add a specific parameter to the end of it. So Paddle.js, which needs to be installed for this page, picks that up and shows the, the Paddle UI for that step. But without this, it's not going to work. And make sure this is accessible on the Sandbox account and later on the production account. Next, second big thing is the statement description. This is used for the credit card transaction. It'll be displayed there next to paddle.net, which is the first part of the transaction. Your custom statement description will be displayed. And if you've applied with a company name, this will be the company name by default or a shortened version of it. You most likely want to change this to your product name if it differs so people can recognize the transaction charges for that specific product. If you don't, you might get a disputed charge. Now, if your account is using multiple products, if you have one account for multiple products, I recommend buying a very short domain, something that resembles your company, for example, that is recognizable as a link, something with .com, for example. It has to be very short. You only have 10 letters, so the domain would be only six letters long. But make it so that people recognize that, enter that into their browser, and then just present them with a page of the different products you offer so people can very quickly identify, ah, yeah, this is the product that, I'm, that I purchased, and they won't dispute the charge that way. I usually go to sales tax settings as well and change this to what I would like globally. You can override this for each product, but it makes sense to have one general setting for your account. And last but not least, under the develop tools authentication, you will need to add a identifier to the Paddle checkout when you implement Paddle.js on your website or in your SaaS. Now, it's very important. It can get big can get a bit confusing. The API key up here is not the key that you're using for Paddle Checkout. The API key will give access to all of your Paddle account, including they can change customers, stop or cancel subscriptions and so on. So this is a full control key. What you want to add to Paddle.js is the client side token. And that only identifies your Paddle account to your SaaS or to Paddle.js, and they won't be able to perform any actions apart from checking out and buying your products. Those are the three steps you need to do once you've created a Paddle account. Thanks for watching. See you next time.